and welcome to Esther's Laguna Wood Show, where every guest matters. Today we have a very special guest. He's a famous movie star and he's also an author. And his name is Brett Halsey. Hi, Brett. Hi. Uh, so nice to see you. Thank you. Before we start, I want to say a special uh, hello to the caregivers for this, uh, this pandemic, uh, especially the those hospital especially the nurses and especially my darling daughter Tracy is one of those nurses risking her life on the front lines thanks Tracy we want to thank her for her service thank you okay so let's start <laughs> okay you made over 100 movies plus tv shows and soaps how did it get started for you Oh, well, it, start, it started, uh, well, when I was very young, I think five years old, I was in a play at church, and, yeah. uh, and uh, I played King Midas, I remember that, and I noticed as I was performing, somehow all these, uh, in the audience, all these adults were listening to what I had to say, and I thought, wow. Oh, that's never happened before. That gave me some little feeling of power. <laughs> so uh, I guess that was kind of the beginning. And after that, I did plays in high school and, and um, I went under contract to Universal Pictures, went to school there. School's very important for acting. Um, I think of uh, some people are like geniuses, like Mozart, and they can do something. But even the, the greatest geniuses, study. So acting is not something people can do just because they feel like it. It takes study. I, when I taught at the University of Costa Rica, I taught there for almost seven years. Uh, it, it was a four-year course and I had mostly fifth-year students. So acting is not something you can say, oh yeah, I want to be an actor. And that's it. And then I uh, graduated slowly, went up into uh, hot rod pictures and uh, more important pictures and with, with the 20th Century Fox. And then, oh, well, I was there. I won this. Oh, Globe. the Golden Globe, yeah. yeah. You won the Golden Globe in 19, what, 61 or 62? I don't remember. 60, 1960. Oh, and 60. then uh, I was nominated in a couple of uh, um, uh, film. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in 2007, you were inducted to the, well, the Spaghetti Western Hall of Fame. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Is about. This hat I, uh, I wore in many Westerns, Spaghetti Westerns. I had a long career in Europe and Italy. And uh, this is the anniversary of uh, when I was inducted into the Spaghetti Western Hall of Fame. So uh, wow. I've had a long, long, long career as an actor and then uh, kind of morphed into writing. I, I'm, more a writer now, but uh, yeah, I think, I think actors. I'm, I'll always be an actor, uh, even though I have no no place that I'm acting these days. I'm, I'm well, you work with so many big name stars, like uh, let, let's see, like uh, John Wayne. John what was Wayne, your experience yeah. with him? That was early in my career. That's that's a kind of a funny story for me. Because uh, in those days, actors didn't do commercials. Commercials yeah. were done only by uh, models. And my agent called me and they said they had a commercial for uh, razor blade, Gillette. And I said, I'm not an actor. Don't don't get something out of here. <laughs> and they said, Well, it's for the World Series, and uh, John Wayne's going to be in it. And I said. John Wayne's in it? Well, okay. <laughs> and that, that's my John Wayne story. John Wayne was a, I can't say we were close friends, but we were, we knew each other and, and communicated. Uh, I was friends with his family. Then, uh, how about Clint Eastwood? Good. You know Clint? Yeah, how, we. How your experiences with Clint Eastwood. We, we started off. Um, Pretty much together, we were both under contract uh, as youngsters at uh, Universal Studio, 
Yeah. In those days, Clint's raised claim to fame as he was the the uh, ping pong champion at the at the fire department. The ping fires. pong champion. Huh. But we remained friends through the years and um, uh, spent time together here and uh, in Italy and good wow. guy, thank you. Fantastic career. Good director. Good actor. You work with Al Pacino. Al. What was your experience with him? <laughs> Al was a is I say was. Uh, 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 another good guy. I, I liked working with Al. He had a great sense of humor. Uh, I can remember once when we were getting ready to start the film uh, Godfather Three. Uh, Coppola had called all his actors in, and we were sitting at tables. And I was sitting at a table, and uh, Al came in and he, he sat with me at the table. I didn't know him then, but Coppola was saying. Um, describing the part and he was describing my part to Al and he kept looking to Al and he says, yeah, he's a good looking guy, Al. And he's tall, Al. He's tall, <laughs> Al. And Al says, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, he plays, uh, you know, the husband of your ex-wife and Al, uh, he's tall. And Al stood up and he said, ah, I, I, I give my kingdom for another inch. And he laughed and they all laughed. He had a good sense of humor. <laughs> you were taller than him. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Quite <laughs> what about uh, Diane Keaton? Diane Keaton, well, I got to know Diane Keaton during the, during the filming, and she was kind of nervous, kind of, I liked her. We, we had a good time. We spent a lot of time together. I was three months on the film, and most of it was. You were supposed you know, to be her husband? I was, I played her husband in the. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, we got along very well. And, 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 and since um, I live um, near the beach, Laguna Beach, uh, and she has been living here as well. So we see each other now and then. And, um, yeah, she's a good girl friend. Wow, that's nice. Uh, Jeff Chandler. Say it again. Jeff. Chandler, oh, you Jeff, Chandler. Him? Jeff Chandler. Yes. Jeff was another good friend. He, uh, when I first got signed at Universal, going to the studio for me was like going to uh, Disneyland for a kid. It was just amazing. You know, in the movie studio and everything that you dreamed about from the movie stars and everything. And the second day I was on the lot, I'm walking down the street, and walking toward me is Jeff Chandler one of the biggest stars at, at, at the time. And I was just so excited to see him. He, and he, he walked right up to me and he stuck his hand out and he says, hi, Brett. My name is Jeff Chandler and I just want to welcome you to the lot. And <laughs> from that time on, we became really good friends. And I was especially thrilled about seven years later, we co-started the film, uh, Return to Peyton Place. So uh -huh. good arc there. Arc, speaking of arcs. You asked the arc of a. I have a bunch of notes here, and I put this one somewhere, and now I can't find it. Ah, uh, the arc. Here it is. Arc of an actor. Act. Arc of, of five stages in the life of a film star. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they are, and this is this is kind of an uh, industry joke. Yes, yes. And the, the the first stage is who is Brett Halsey. Second stage is, get me Brett Halsey. <laughs> Third stage is, well, get me a Brett Halsey type. <laughs> Fourth stage is, get me a younger Brett Halsey. <laughs> the last stage is, who's Brett Halsey? <laughs> and that's about the way it is. <laughs> Let's see, uh, who else did you, I mean, you work with so many people. I mean, a lot of people, you know, you made a hundred movies. So, uh, what about Vincent Price? Vincent Price, yeah, he's he's really one of my favorites. We we co-starred in two films: uh, um, Return of the Fly. I was the fly, and he played my uncle. And uh, he did another or thing called Twice Told Tales. Very nice man, extremely giving as an actor to young actors. He, he, not a teacher, but 
kind of a mentor. And also he was a mentor in uh, in art. He was in one of the great art collections and uh, advised wow. me on a couple of paintings that I bought that I still have. Wow. You also worked with the Mary Astor. Astor. Yes. Mary Astor, one of the great movie stars of all time, started in the in the silence, had a good career uh, all the way through Maltese Falcon. And, and um, she played my mother in Return to Peyton Place. Uh, wonderful, wonderful actress. Uh, and also a good mentor for, for young you, people. You also worked with uh, Percy Kilbridge. Percy Kilbride. <laughs> Kilbride, okay. Oh, Percy Kilbride. Wonderful <laughs> man. He, he was Mon Pa Kettle. If you remember Mon Pa Kettle. Yeah. He was Pa Kettle. He was a wonderful actor. Wonderful, nice man. And maybe one of the best with the young actors. He was really helpful and kind. One of the sad things is about, as I remember about him, is he never learned to drive a car. And, uh, he died, he was killed walking across Hollywood Boulevard. He was run over by a car. I thought that's kind of strange. I'm going, I'm going to ask you one more. How about Tony Curtis? Tony. Tony was a good friend. Tony was a, a, a very good friend. Great sense of humor. I think Tony was one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. I don't know why, but he was really a very, very good actor uh, and, and a great friend. I have one thing I remember when we were both young, uh, we were going into the commissary at the studio and um, I asked Tony, uh, I, I had to make a phone call and I asked him, I said, do you have a dime? I, don't, I said, yeah, sure. And he gave me the dime. The next day I saw him, I said, oh, hey, Tony, here, here's your dime back. And he said, oh, damn. And I said, what, you done it? Yeah, you did it. I said, what, what would I do? He said, you established credit. <laughs> and that was his sense of humor. Really good friend, good guy. Let's talk about your book. Let's talk about the art of writing. Um, the art of writing. All right. OK. Uh, what, what famous writers do you like? Famous writers that I like, OK. I guess I'll start with Bud Schoberg. Bud Schoberg wrote um, What Makes Sammy Run and The Disenchanted. Uh, and when I was reading Bud Schoberg, uh, it's kind of when I decided that I could write or that I wanted to write, that I wanted to write. And he, he was an inspiration for me. He, he wrote about old Hollywood. Um, wonderful writer. Uh, you know, I think before I talk about the writers, I'm going to talk about my books. Yes, okay. I'll talk about, okay, um, you wrote five novels. Right. And okay. I, I made some little notes I'm going to refer to when I talk okay. about them. Um, first one, Magnificent Strangers. Yes. And this was my first novel. Yes. And it's closely linked to my film career in La Dolce Vita Rome in the 1960s. It was an era of spectacular movies, beautiful people, easy money, and easy sex. The fact that many of the characters were based on people that I knew and worked with raised more than a few eyebrows. Oh, I should also mention the Magnificent Strangers won the Corgi Award for Best Contemporary Novel of the Year from the uh, West Coast Review of Books. Then came Yesterday's the second children. movie was Yesterday's Children. Yesterday's Children. Now, I used my experience working in daytime soaps to write my second novel, Yesterday's Children. Now, we all know that soaps are full of adultery, infidelity, and intrigue, but behind the camera, Yesterday's Children exposes where the real action happens. The characters are, again, based on real people who lived a real life action packed drama of love, disappointment, sex, and murder. Then came uh, <clears throat> my soul to keep. I have this. You have that, huh? Yeah. This is, this is one of my favorites. 
course, it's having favorite books is like having favorite children. It's, yeah. You love them all. Because my soul to keep is a historical novel. I was a family similar to my own ancestors in their fight to survive the social upheaval of 19th century California. It's a sweeping saga of passionate women and men trying to resist the unrelenting advance of changing times. Yeah. Well, then came a grave misunderstanding. This is another one of my favorites. It's a dark, fast paced thriller where a woman accident, excuse me, a woman accidentally uh, kills her drunken, violent husband and then decides with her boyfriend to hide the husband's body in the, in the grave of his first wife. Well, this doubtful team gets in motion a series of uh, unintended deaths. Uh, there's also a bit of dark comedy in it. <laughs> Very dark. You like dark comedy. <laughs> then came the last one out. West of Hell. Hell. West of Hell is a. What is this about? It's uh, set in the mid 1800s, where a white character, Chris Tracy, is the lead character, and an old friend set out and in a search for lost gold in the desert. Yeah. Well, this leads them into dangers far greater than the devastating sun, the hostile Indians, and the unknown riders relentlessly dogging their trail. It's a, it's a, it's a Western show. In fact, um, it was, it's been so well received that I have, I am currently writing a sequel to it. Not actually a sequel, but a really? continuation. Huh. Yeah, you're, you're writing two more novels, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, that's one of them. Then the other one is a historical comedy. I call it the, uh, the Zarina's favorite cousin. Uh, he, he's an Italian prince who, who was a warrior, and he helped the Russians fight uh, <clears throat> in the Napoleonic War. Uh, being the Tsarina's cousin is kind of strange, but in, in those days, it seemed like all of European royalty was in one way or another related. They were an incestuous bunch there in, in those days. Next. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where can people buy your books? Well, if you want Sign an books. autograph, Copy. You can yeah. write to my uh, my uh, website, uh, bredhalsey.net, and then uh, I, uh, that's the only way to get an autograph copy. Otherwise, uh, you can order it at your favorite bookstore or uh, on Amazon. Uh, but the only the way, way that uh, you're going to sign it is if they go to your website. Yeah, because that's the only way I'll I'll know that, you, that somebody wants it. Personally, yeah. that I'll know. Yeah. Um, now I kind of want to talk about writing. If we have time before. Yes, we still um, have time. Um, now I, I, I have notes in the, in, in the usual. Uh, here we go. I have to find all these notes. Okay. Um, you know, I get, writing is, is really funny. Uh, I, I'm, now I'm quoting, I'm reading someone else that I've kind of adapted to myself. But yeah. One of the quotes I kind of like is, uh, I'm a writer. Yeah. We are the people who stay up past 12 a.m. finishing a story. We are misunderstood and underpaid. Uh, well, uh, we spend our free time fixing plot holes, but we bring to life characters and a world that may intrigue you because you remember, we like you, wanting to escape from reality. Now, this means I spend much of my life in a very fantasy world with unrealistic expectations. I'm an artist, like Always remembering this book. This is my favorite quote from Rocky Horror Show. That fantasy 
is the only real reality. Now, I, I, I go back to uh, Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut wrote uh, Old Slaughterhouse Five, Breakfast of Champions, a very famous, very great author. And he said, Go into the arts. I'm not kidding. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how badly, is a way to make your soul grow. Mm. For heaven's wow. sake, sing in the shower. Dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. You'll get an enormous reward. You will have created something. Then one of my favorite authors is Louis L'Amour. He's probably the best, he's one of the best, when I say best selling, he sold more books than maybe anybody. Really? In the category, yeah. Wow. Um, and I met him and we, we spent some time together at various author conventions. And he says, the quote that I, I, I like very much is Muniz, if you want to be a writer, the first essential to write. Don't it's wait like for an idea. Start writing something. The yeah. idea will come. You have to turn on the faucet before the water will flow. Wow. Just do it, huh? Just write. Because the worst thing you write is better than the best thing you didn't write. That you don't write, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Then one of the uh, my favorite authors, uh, Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King is another soul. Well, well over thirty bestsellers, and he's a great writer. And he wrote. Uh, um, a great book about writing. But his most important quote, what he emphasizes more than anything, is people have to read. He says, if you don't have time to read, then you don't have the time or the tools to write. Because you, it's kind of a, a learning, absorbing process to take from all the uh, from the authors that, uh, that you read. It's, it's, it's part of the education. Nobody like acting or, or, or music or, or uh, creating sculpting. You have to practice them and, and you have to learn from, from the masters. You have to go go to the ones you admire and, and, and see what you can take from them, absorb from them. You're nodding. You agree with me. <laughs> it's a good thing to start writing. Maybe I'm going to start writing poetry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like they say, supposing it isn't very good. I, I was reading some in, in Stephen King's book on writing. Yeah. Um, some poetry that some people have written that made no sense at all. But still. Wow. There you're expressing yourself. It makes sense. If you write a poem, Esther. If it makes no sense to me or, or anybody else, it makes sense to you. That's what's important because it, you, you are, as they say, creating something. Yeah, wow. I'm going to start doing it. <laughs> yeah. Start short writing stories, poetry. <laughs> short stories, but many authors like Stephen King, he started off writing uh, short stories. He'd write stories for magazines and get maybe 10 or $15. For a story, but he oh, wrote. Wow. He'd send hundreds of them. I, th I think he said once one of the best days of his life is when he got a hundred dollars for a story that he wrote. That was the biggest deal because he wow. was working like in a mill for like a dollar and a quarter an hour just to, 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 to eat. That's one of the lessons that my um, most of my favorite acting teachers uh, have emphasized. And that is, if you want to be in the acting profession, first thing you have to do is learn a, a, a trade of some kind so you can afford to eat while you're <laughs> building your career. But you have to have some way to eat while you're trying to be an actor. 
it's it's so much work the the art the acting and everything is so much work it's hard it takes a lot of time but you know you, you have to do something else in the meantime until you start making money from acting or writing a book well it, it, it's our job to make it look easy one of the famous <laughs> actors i can't remember his name now he said um the biggest mistake an actor can make is to get caught doing it. You don't want to see your actors acting. You want to see your actors playing a character, being being what you're looking for on the screen. Or on, on screen. Oh, here's another another writing quote. Okay. Writing of and this is one of the one of the uh, bad things of, of writing. Writing a book is like telling a joke. And having to wait two years to know whether or not it's funny, because you're right, you don't know how, if people like it until uh, until they read it. And uh, most of the books I've written, I'm not a fast writer. I've taken me a year, two years, you know, to fix it here, fix it there. Um, so that, that's true. That's one of the disappointments of writing. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> And acting, the disappointments of acting also is uh, getting old. <laughs> getting old. When, when I was doing all the action films and fighting and killing and jumping up and down horses and everything, I could do it today. No, I can't <laughs> fall off my horse anymore. One of the benefits of uh, getting old is we get smarter, huh? Well, there's a saying uh, with age comes wisdom. Yes. But sometimes, sometimes <laughs> age comes alone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was so much fun having you yeah. in my Zoom room. <laughs> Zoom, yeah. <laughs> Great modern science. <laughs> have this interview in your, I don't know, clear across town somewhere. And I'm in, the, in my office where my little creative nest. Yes. It looks nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Thank you for watching. And next time, we'll have another interesting guest. Thank you. Bye.